All right. Hey, this is, uh, this is, I'm wrapping up the whole series. This is part seven, so I'm going to do my best to end with this. I'm praying that I can do it because I did a series that I only was going to do one or two, and I ended up doing 12. Then I did a series, uh, anyways, it was only supposed to be one or two, and now this is the one, and it's now seven. But I really believe this is going to be the most important of them all because this is going to tie everything together, and you're going to understand exactly why Paul sworn in the flesh was the spirit of murder, and you're going to understand exactly what has taken place throughout human history and what will take place in the end time. So this is the unveiling of Satan's plan. I just woke up from a dream this morning uh, in which uh, basically I had a 15-foot uh, angel next to me. And uh, I, I looked at him and I'm like, oh, I thought you were somebody else. And the Bible says that, you know, many have entertained angels unaware. So I was unaware that the person next to me, I thought he was somebody else, and he ended up being this guy that was 15 feet tall. So I, I feel that God is releasing me to share this revelation. You may not believe in angels, but I do. Uh, you may not believe that angels come in dreams. I do believe they come in dreams. I mean, when Joseph, if you believe in the Bible, uh, an angel came to Joseph and said, Fear not to take on you, uh, you know, Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she'll bring forth the Son, and he'll be called Jesus, and he'll save his people from their sins. So if you say you believe the Bible and you're a Christian, but you don't believe that God uh, works through dreams, then you don't believe Acts 2, 16 and 17, because the Bible says that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and young men will see visions. So this is biblical, whether you believe it or not. And God wants to bring revelation to reveal the end time plan of Satan, not to be prideful and like, oh, look at this, is so you're not involved in it. So I actually speak to different nations. I speak to Islamic people. I speak to, you know, Hindu, Buddhist, Satanist, atheist, agnostic, witches, sorcerers. I speak about these things because God has called me. He gave me a dream years ago. In the dream, Jesus, I was my face was before. I mean, we were at the throne of God. Our faces were to the ground. Jesus, you know, like walked out of the glory of the Father. He picked us up, lifted us up to himself, and he thanked us. We asked him, why are you thanking us? He said, look around. We looked around. There were different people groups from all the different nations behind us. And so I believe that God has called me to be a minister and a witness to the nation. So I speak to atheists, agnostic. I speak to, you know, uh, people in, in Islam. I speak to people to say that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. And I share revelations that God has given me for these end times to open up men's eyes because when I heard the effect of every vision shall be retained no longer on May 15th, there was a man who was blind hands were laid upon him. When the hands were removed, the scales were removed from his eyes. He was able to see the truth. And when you see the truth, then you can be saved. So here's the revelation now of the end times. Now, Revelation chapter 12 clearly reveals Satan's plan of the end times. And it says, the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child who was to rule all nations, and her child was snatched up to God in his throne, and then uh, the woman fled in the, in the desert to a place prepared for her by God uh, where my, she might be taken care of. Okay, so the revelation is, is that Israel, okay, was the woman that gave forth to the Messiah who was the man-child. The man-child being Jesus was caught up. Now he is at the right hand of the throne of God. When my friend saw us in heaven, we were before the throne of God. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He can go in and out of the Father. He walks right out of the glory of the Father because they are not only three, but they are one. Okay. Anyways, I'll have to get into that. I've shared it in other videos. You'll just have to check for it. Anyways, so the real Jesus Christ is really coming back. The real Jesus Christ is going to set up his millennial reign. The Bible says the gospel will go into all the world or all the nations, okay, as a witness to all the nations before the end comes. The gospel of the kingdom. So now we're talking about a kingdom called the millennial reign of Jesus Christ in which Jesus Christ is going to rule on the earth. Satan is trying to fulfill an end time mandate that he himself has made up that he wants to fulfill. And the Bible says when he knows his days are short, he goes about on the earth with great wrath seeking to set up his end time plan. God gave me a dream and during the time of the fight with Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson, in which Mike Tyson bit the ear of Evander Holyfield. Mike Tyson was a Muslim at that time. Um, Evander Holyfield 
Evander Evangelist Holyfield is a picture. These are prophetic names in a sense that reveal pictures. I had a dream at that time. I saw a man. There was like a throne. There were like these, you know, I said they were like, they looked like peacocks and, and like the feathers from Babylon, basically. This man came up to me. He bit my ear. When he bit my ear, he turned around and he said, I am Antichrist. I understood the revelation was that the Antichrist would try to dismember the body of Christ cause us the hearing to where we do not hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So that's his goal, okay? And then I tied this in that when Jesus was in the garden, when the, the soldiers came to take him, to deliver him to Pilate, to be crucified, Peter cut the man's ear. Jesus immediately grabbed the ear, put it back on the man, and healed him instantly. In fact, we know he actually became a believer and became part of the first century church. Why? Well, because the man had a, an ear that was cut off, and Jesus put it right back on. He understood the man, obviously, could do miracles. Anyways, so when that happened, the revelation was, is see, when, when, when Jesus was with his disciples, and he was telling them what was going to happen, you know, Peter said, hey, I've got here two swords. And Jesus said, man... Um, who lives by the sword will die by the sword. So actually, Peter did have a sword on him when Jesus came because Peter was trying to protect God. God does not need your protection. He can protect himself. But when he tried to do that, Jesus was making a revelation right there is that Christians, you who believe on me, are not to live by the sword or you will die by the sword. That's not what I've called you. I've called you to live by the word of God, which the Bible calls the sword of the spirit. So he, the revelation when he put the ear back on the man was saying, I don't want any of my family, any of the born again children of God, my church that make up my body, which make up my bride, I don't want them to cut or dismember any Gentile. I don't want them to hurt men, for I did not come to bring pain and sorrow and suffering to men's life. I came that they might have life and have it more abundant. So God doesn't want his family doing what the world or Satan would do in the world, which is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants us to bring life and bring it more abundant to people. Okay, so the revelation that God gave me then was that Saul's thorn in the flesh was a messenger of Satan to buffet him or to finish him off or to polish him off. Basically, that this was a spirit of murder. The word ben, uh, messenger, okay, is actually the word that we get from, uh, it's like angelus, okay, which angel. He was an angel from Satan. God did not send, I mean, I share with you about that, you know, God hardening Pharaoh's heart. It wasn't God, it was Satan, but God allowed it. I shared a record about when um, David numbered Israel. The Bible says it was Satan that caused David to number Israel. The Bible says that the Lord slew Saul, and yet we find that Saul committed suicide because he went to a witch of Endor, and then Samuel came up in a medium, in a seance, and he appeared before him, and he told Saul that his sons would all be killed in battle, and that's what happened because Saul got full of fear, Saul believed the lie of Satan, and Saul ended up losing his uh, family and his own life. But the Bible says the Lord slew Saul, and yet the Bible says that Saul fell on the sword. So did the Lord slew Saul, or did Saul fall on the sword? Saul fell on his own sword and committed suicide. Why? Because he disobeyed the word of God. God told him to take the people with familiar spirits, the mediums, the sorcerers, the witches, out of the land, okay, out of the main land, the jurisdiction of Israel, and he went outside of the will of God, outside of the land, outside of the land of promise, outside of what God had for him. Those are all prophetic revelations. And he went outside the will of God to the will of Satan, received the words from Satan through a witch, a medium, and a sorcerer, fortune teller, through a, you know, brought up a demon, a familiar spirit that impersonated, you know, Saul, and therefore, he received revelation from the dark side that he would be killed and his children, which actually happened. So the Lord didn't slew him. Now in the New Testament, in Thessalonians, it says the Lord is going to allow a strong delusion for men to believe a lie who all might be damned, who had pleasure in unrighteousness because they did not receive the love of the truth, they might be saved. I'm trying to give you the revelation of the truth, okay, as a minister of Jesus Christ, 
I'm not trying to bring down fire from heaven and judge men because Jesus said to his disciples when he came into Jerusalem and they rejected him, they said, shall we call down fire from heaven like Elijah did? And Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are. Meaning I did not come to judge men, to destroy men, to cut off their ears. I didn't come to hurt anybody. I came as the Prince of Peace to deliver hope and faith and trust in God and salvation through my death on the cross of Jesus, uh, my on my cross, okay? And Jesus did die on a cross. Nobody took his place. In the Islamic religion, they teach that, um, that Allah changed the face of Judas, okay, to make them think that it was Jesus, that they accidentally crucified Judas on the cross instead of Jesus, that Jesus was allowed to go free, that he stood before Allah, and Allah, Allah said, you know, that you made some mistakes on the earth. You Instead of you were my, my prophet, you, were, you said you were the son of God. You claimed this cross thing. None of this was my plan. And basically Allah allows Jesus then to come at the end of time to be the prophet that he was called to be. Not the son of God, but the prophet that he will now bear witness to the Mahdi. Well, I'm telling you, if you're Islamic, just listen. God loves you. Jesus died for you. He shed his blood. When I was before the throne of, of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ thanked me for bringing the nations to him. So I'm trying to speak to nations right now. Look, if you're Islamic, look, God loves you. Jesus died for you. But let me tell you something, that what if you, what if some of your members of your family you knew were in a satanic plot of the end times? Now listen, the book of Revelation says there will be a religion on the earth that is going to cut the heads off of Christians. That is dismembering the body or the bride of Jesus Christ. The ultimate sin, which is unforgivable, is that you will reject the Spirit of Christ. The Bible says if you do not have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. That you will reject the true Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Spirit of love, peace, joy, goodness, long-suffering, faith, meekness, temperance, against there is no law, and you will receive a spirit of murder, and that was the spirit that Saul was operating within. That's why I told you that Paul's thorn in the flesh was a spirit of murder. I just saw an Islam an article. It was so sad. It was on uh, Walid Shubat's uh, just www.shubat.com. I think it's S H O E B A T about a man who's crying because a ten-year-old uh, girl who was Islamic who became a Christian, a a young boy walked up and shot her right in the heart. Okay. Now listen, this is reality, so I'm trying to tell you, God does not want to judge you at the end of time because you partook in the spirit of murder because he delivered Saul from that spirit and he turned Saul into a follower of Jesus Christ. And look, Jesus Christ appeared to Saul as he was going on the road to Damascus to kill Christians. Saul was on his way to kill Christians and to haul them off into prison. We know that's true because he stoned Stephen. He stood by, and uh, while they were stoning Stephen, he stood by and watched, and God gave Stephen a revelation of Jesus before the throne of God, seating at the right hand of God. And see, when I said the word Benjamin, God anointed the word Benjamin because Benjamin means son of my right hand. Jesus is really... God's son, okay, he's not just Allah's prophet, he is God's son, he was with the Father from eternity, he is the word of God that was made flesh, he is divine, the divine holy son of God, and he will come back and rule one day on the earth, and if you, you know, were one of those that dismembered Christ's body, okay, meaning you were the murderers, okay, and the liars, and you particularly, you chose, now, um, when Saul, in Acts 9, when he went against the body of Christ, which is the bride of Christ, and you know, when you attack Christ's bride, you are attacking Jesus himself. That's why it causes its antichrist. When Jesus um, appeared to Paul, brighter than the sun, knocked him off his horse, and, uh, you know, Paul said, who are you? And he said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. When you persecute a child of God, you are personally persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is anti-Christ. If you're going against Christ, you're anti-Christ. And I told you, just like Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson, when Mike Tyson bit Evander Holyfield's ear, it was like biting the, it was like dismembering a part of the body of Christ. So see, Paul's thorn in the flesh was a spirit of murder. The reason why it did not depart 
is because Saul had sown into that spirit for so long. And I mean, I'll read it. It's Acts chapter 9. Just listen, because I was shown this, and this is a revelation. I'm going to end with this in part 7, but this is the full. Now I'm tying the whole thing together for you to understand, because God gave this to me by revelation. He downloaded it all one morning. I did not research this or study it, nor did I understand it. God gave it to me by revelation to help you. Look, if you're Islamic, God doesn't want to judge you. He wants you to be free and, and, and stand before him one day, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. When I stand before Jesus, he wants you behind me saying, oh my God, thank you that this revelation that I received the love of the truth that I might be saved. You see, man, my emotions are coming out because I feel the presence of the Lord because God is not willing that any man perishes, but all would come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. I'm testifying this is the time, and that is that Jesus gave his life on a cross as a ransom, as a payment for your sins. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 1, it says that, that Jesus Christ, that he paid as the propitiation, as the payment for our sins, not our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Meaning that any man, woman, and child, boy or girl on this earth, whether you're Islamic, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever you are, Satanist, agnostic, that whoever believes on Jesus Christ as the Son of God will not perish, okay, meaning they're going to lose out on eternal life, perish in the flames of hell, will not perish but have everlasting life, okay? So because you did not receive the love of the truth to be saved, that's why I'm giving you revelation of the truth because this is love and God's trying to turn you from your wickedness just like he tried to turn Saul from his wickedness, just like he turned uh, Walid Shubat. Walid Shubat was a, a, a Muslim brotherhood and, and he left because he didn't want to be a murderer. Uh, there's another guy, Tassada. He didn't want to murder, and so, you know, he was, uh, he was uh, Arafat's driver, okay? And so those of you who don't want to be murderers in the last days, because look, how do you know Allah, if, uh, let's say Allah was true, how do you know Allah is not going to judge you for murdering human beings on the earth? So, look, Allah is just a different name that you came up with, but I'll be honest with you, there's a belief system that is satanic, and if Satan can do exactly what he did with Saul to murder Christians you know, and Jews, okay, because the ultimate goal is, see, Satan, the dragon, went forth to make war against the woman and her seed. The woman is Israel, the seed was Jesus, who Israel brought into the world, okay, and now all those who now keep the commandments of Jesus Christ, the Bible calls us now the woman's seed who are on the earth, who have the spirit of prophecy, which is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so Saul was the Bible says he was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, okay? Then Jesus said, whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. That's why in the end of time when the sheep uh, are on his right hand and the goat nations are on his left, he will say to those on his right, come and enter my Father's kingdom. I mean, come into heaven because it was prepared for you before the world began. Meaning, I shed my blood. The Bible says the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for us who do believe in God, who we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says God has allowed all nations to walk out their own ways, but now he has ordained a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Remember, he gave himself as a ransom for many, meaning that Judas, Allah did not make Judas look like Jesus and they crucified you know, Jesus, I mean Judas accidentally. No, it was the plan of God that Jesus would give his life on the cross for your forgiveness and for mine because God had to be just and his justice is that someone had to pay the penalty of sin and he knew since when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden that it wasn't right to judge the whole human race because of one man's sin that's why he came into the world in the person of his son on the earth in human flesh and he paid a price you can't pay. So he redid everything that Satan did in Genesis, God redid at the cross to bring love, light, hope, truth, goodness, and eternal salvation to all men through the forgiveness of sins. That's why when Paul was, you know, trying to persecute Jesus, and Jesus said, whatever you did to the least of these you did to me, he was trying to cut up or dismember the bride of Christ. That goes all the way back to Judges 19, in which the 
the man and the woman that were traveling through Benj uh, traveling through Bethlehem, okay, that this woman was raped and then she died and then she was cut up into pieces and she was spread into the land of Israel. The reason why God considers that such a horrible sin is because they thought that this woman who was a concubine, Satan was working in the situation to kill the seed of the woman. That was his heart toward Mary, who was really a virgin, who gave birth to the Messiah on the earth. And now that is his heart to the bride of Christ. So Satan looks at the bride of Christ as a concubine. He wants to rob and steal and destroy those who are now born again of Christ's spirit, those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, those who were anointed by God for these end times. And see, by us revealing these truths, the Jews should have their eyes open now that's why God's going to raise up the 144,000 of the Jews to be witnesses on the earth because they're going to have their eyes open to the truth. They understand why all the wars, why all the trouble. See, Islamic people have been against the Jews, but you understand that Islamic people, it's Satan who is against you. You really think you hate the Jews, but the truth of the matter is, is you hate what has happened in history because you don't want bloodshed, you don't want war, you don't want disease, you don't want all this stuff, but it is Satan, the, the, the God of this world, has blinded your minds that you do not believe. And that's why Satan has put that spirit of murder now within your religion. That's why you've got to go against this very spirit of murder within your own religion because I, God gave me a dream, okay, and this is a couple months ago, and he showed me Islamic terrorism, that the, the ones that Satan is going to be in, they're going to kill their own brethren. And so that's what's really going on right now is it's a spirit of murder. Just like this, this little girl became a Christian, this boy shot her right in the heart. That is a picture of Satan's plan for the end time. And he wants to cut off the heads of the Christians in the end time. That is the spirit of murder. That is the spirit that dismembers the body of Christ. It is the unforgivable sin. It is the black me against the Holy Spirit, because whatever you did to the least of these you did to me, that is the spirit of Antichrist. The Bible says, whoever denies the Son, okay, denies the Father that sent him, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. God is trying to prevent you from operating in that spirit. He is trying to save you and your family, and if you're Islamic, please listen to me. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, do not be deceived. It is your own brethren that are going to kill you. You are the ones that are going to be deceived. Why? Because you did not receive the love of the truth that you might be saved, because you didn't know the truth, and God knew you didn't know the truth, and that's why God is trying to reveal to you the truth, so you'll turn your heart toward God. Look, while each Shubat turned his heart toward God and he's now saved and he's a born-again Christian on fire for Jesus. Uh, 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 Tasada, his heart was turned to, uh, toward God. Jesus came to him, a light came in his room and, and a, a voice spoke and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Look, I stood before Jesus Christ himself after I was before the throne of God the Father. Jesus walked out of the glory of the Father, meaning that he's one with the Father. I and my Father are one. That's the revelation. There are three and they are one, okay? The Father has a throne. The Son sits right next to him. And the Holy Spirit shows up sometimes before their throne, but most of the time he's on earth trying to reveal revelation and wisdom to you because Jesus said, when I leave the earth, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of judgment and of righteousness, of sin because they don't believe in me. See, if you don't believe in Jesus, it is sin. Your, your heart is blinded, your mind is blinded to know and understand the truth. Of righteousness because the prince of this world is judged. My words to you right now over this YouTube is proof that Satan has been judged already through the cross and blood of Jesus Christ. He is actually bound. He has, he has on his wrists, there are actually clips on both his wrists right now. They're on there right now because one day an angel is going to take a chain and hook him up and cast him into a bottomless pit. Anyways, the, the prince of this world is judged of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and righteousness. Righteousness is that God made Jesus sin on the cross for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's why Moses put the serpent on the pole, that whoever would look on him that had been bitten by the serpent, we've all been bitten by the serpent because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. There's the prophecy of Isaiah 53. Any Jewish person should have their eyes open right now and understand that Rachel, and, and if you're Islamic and you know about Bethlehem, look, Rachel's tomb is in Bethlehem. 
Bethlehem. Rachel's tomb, she gave birth to a son. She wanted to name him Benoni. That's the first coming of the Messiah, of Jesus on the earth. And then the father renamed him Benjamin. And Benjamin means son of my right hand. It is a fulfillment that one man would have two names, which would be the picture of the first and second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is now coming back a second time, and there are two parts to the second coming of Jesus Christ, just like there were two parts to his first coming. It was his revelation to when he was born in Bethlehem, and then when he came and rode the donkey in Jerusalem. The Jews of that day thought they wanted a kingdom where they'd kill all the Romans and establish the rule of Jerusalem upon the earth, and they didn't understand that God sent a Benoni, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Surely he did, we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, yet he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus Christ was whipped by the Jews of his day at least 195 times because the Bible says he was marred more than any man. He did die on a cross. He was crucified. Nobody took his place. This was the salvation of every Jew, every person in Islam, every Buddhist, every Hindu, every person, all the nations, the gospel, the good news of the life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ will go into all the world as a witness to all nations. So to tie this whole thing together, Paul's thorn in the flesh was a spirit of murder. It was Satan's plan for the end time to dismember the body of Christ. And those who will dismember the bride of Christ in the end of time by cutting off Christians' heads, by killing people, will be those that have the spirit of murder, they will be those that have committed the unforgivable sin, those that have blasphemed the Holy Spirit, those that would not allow the heart of God to go in them, those who had pleasure in the sin of unrighteousness, those that denied the Father and they denied the Son, and they, they received the spirit of Antichrist, and now they are fulfilling the role of the dragon and the serpent in Revelation 7, which a spirit of murder and a spirit of lying. Jesus said that that Satan is a liar and a murderer who would not abide within the truth. I am giving you the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. One day I will stand before Jesus and I pray to God, you're one of those nations that are behind me, saying, giving glory and honor to Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross, he shed his blood, that whoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. God is not condemning you. He is trying to save you that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm doing my best to wrap this thing up. I think this is part seven. I don't know if I'm going to part eight yet, but look, Paul's thrown in the flesh, a spirit of murder. You want to be the exact opposite spirit. You want to have a spirit of love, a spirit of joy, a spirit of peace, the spirit of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if any man does not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Bible says, he that has life, has, he who has Christ has life, he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. You either have the Son of God or you do not have the Son of God. If you do not have the Son of God, it is possible that you will open yourself up for Satan's end time plan and you will be those that will dismember the very bride of Jesus Christ. He said, whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. That's why when the goat nations stand before Jesus, he is going to say, why didn't you feed me when I was hungry? Why didn't you clothe me when I was naked? Why didn't you visit me when I was in prison? And they will say to him, they will say, if we would have known it was you, we would have done those things. He said, whatever you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did to me. Whatever you have done to a Christian, whatever you have done to a Jew, if you're a goat nation and you're standing in the end of time at the left side of Jesus Christ, the Bible says he will say, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? Because whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. When you killed my Jewish brethren, you did it to me. When you attacked my Christian brethren, you did it to me. And I am coming at the end of the world. I'm going to establish my kingdom on this earth forevermore. And I will have light and love and goodness and truth and faithfulness and hope. And every single thing will be restored. Every plant that my Heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. I will once again restore the kingdom of David. I will make things the way they are supposed to be. And love and joy and peace will reign throughout this earth. There will be no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, no more suffering. For the former things of this world have passed away. And behold, I will make all things new.